Hey, this is Per Gessler and I'm here to talk a little bit about the new PG Roxette album Pop Up Dynamo. I start with the title. Why Pop Up Dynamo? Well, I wanted the album title to be light but still energetic. I started out this project with the idea of writing up-tempo songs in the same style I wrote for Roxette in the 80s and in the early 90s. And to write up-tempo, contagious pop songs after being on the case for more than 40 years is not that easy. I've written so much, so many songs. Are there any notes left for me to play? Well, that was the challenge. I saw myself as some sort of a dynamo, a pop-up dynamo. I like that notion of curiosity. And I've always liked the word pop because that's the music I do and that's the music where I come from and that's the universe where I belong. Roxette ended in 2016 when Marie Fredrickson told me she wasn't able to continue to work anymore due to her illness. We had to cancel our big European tour scheduled for the summer of 2016 we already sold 250,000 tickets, but it wasn't to be. I couldn't really decide what to do. Was it time to let Roxette go or should I continue? Well, I talked to Marie about it and she didn't have any problems with me continuing on my own, which felt good, of course. But still, I didn't know what to do. I've been working with Marie and Roxette since 1986. It's such a long time. And of course, I didn't want to try to replace her. It's totally impossible to do anyway, so that thought never crossed my mind. The reason why I finally made the decision to continue was that I really wanted to play the old Roxette songs live in concert. After all, I've written most of those songs on my own anyway, and they're so much part of my life and my personality. They're my little babies. And there's a big world out there who are still into the Roxette music and loves the Roxette legacy. We've touched so many people with our music all over the planet, and we've always been very proud and honored by that. Then the pandemic came crashing down on Mother Earth, so I decided to bring the Roxette band together to record new material instead of touring. That's why I made Pop Up Dynamo. My plan was to work with a classic Roxette lineup on the recordings. Clarence Overman on keyboards and programming, Magnus Berrison on bass guitar and programming, Christopher Lundquist and Jonas Isaacson on guitars, and our backing vocalists, Helena Josephson and Dia Norberg singing, together with me. I didn't really need any drummer on the recordings since all percussion was gonna be programmed, just like we did most of the time with Roxette in the 80s and in the 90s. That's how Pop-Up Dynamo was born, and all these beautiful people I mentioned were my key players. I started making the demos for Pop-Up Dynamo at the TNA studio in Halmstad in October 2019, together with my old pal Mats Persson from Gyllene Tider, which was the band the two of us started back in 1978. For 37 years, I've made most of my demos together with Mats in his studio. Nowadays, it's situated in the center of Halmstad on the Swedish west coast. And we work really well together. It's all very relaxed, lots of coffee, lots of stories from our colorful but very blurry past. Mats is a brilliant musician, engineer and a true sonic professor. He's also one of the nicest people I know. He makes me shine all the time. That's a very good environment to be in. The real recordings of Pop Up Dynamo started at the Farazone studio in Malmö, down south in Sweden, in May 2020. That sounds pretty fancy, but in reality, it's just an old, quite big bedroom in Magnus Bergson's apartment. It's a room he has rebuilt into a massive wet dream of old synthesizers and analog stuff, combined with the recent plugins and rapid computers. And it's in the center of town. Lots of eclectic lunch joints all around. The recordings went on and off for almost a year. Magnus and Clarence Overman got together and worked on my demos as soon as I had something worth spending time on. And it sounded amazing from day one. The last part of the recordings of Pop Up Dynamo was made at Christopher Lundquist's farmhouse studio called the Aerosol Grey Machine in the spring of 2021. 
located in Vallarum, also in the south of Sweden. We did some guitar overdubs there as well as more vocals and some additional recordings with just Christopher and me. Then when the album was done, we sent the tapes and stems to Ronnie Lachti in Stockholm. Ronnie has been mixing Roxette since the Room Service album in 2001, and I've been working with him on so many of my other projects over the years. My Swedish solo stuff, as well as the Monomind recordings, for example. He is really top-notch and got that magic touch when it comes to bring out the best in a music production. The idea behind Pop-Up Dynamo was to recreate the style of songwriting I had when I wrote Roxette's Look Sharp and Joyride. As a songwriter, you tend to develop and change without realizing it. Nobody invents the wheel anymore, but you slowly alter your direction and style because the rest of the world is spinning around. Things change. That's natural and normal, and it has to be like that. I wanted to try to go back to the style I had in, let's say, 1988 and go from there. I didn't want it to sound like a retro record. I wanted a modern twist in the production, but I wanted myself to write songs in the manner I did in the late 80s and early 90s. It felt very inspiring. As always, my main inspiration as a songwriter comes from the music I listened to when I grew up which is the music from the 60s and 70s. I love that. I love that era. I love the record sleeves, the smell of a new vinyl record. I love how it sounded on the radio. I love that little hiss from the cassette tape. I'm a melody guy. If a song doesn't have a strong melody, I'm not really that interested. I would love to be more interested in grooves or sub bass, but I'm not. My idea of a good record production is if the melodies shine through comfortably. I love really strong melody writers like Burt Bacharach, Paul McCartney, the Bee Gees, Elton John, Paul Simon, there are so many of them. The new generation of songwriters have a tough challenge to break through because most stuff that's released on the streaming services today sounds truly amazing. The production, the sounds, the plugins, the tricks you can do in the computer are beyond belief and sound really, really cool. But what's lacking most of the time is a really good song. But hey, that's what I think, and I'm the old one here. The first person I thought of as the producer for Pop Up Dynamo was Clarence Overman. He's been producing all the Roxette records since the very first single and we still work together, even if he sometimes doesn't want to be a producer anymore. But I always have him around, playing keyboards on my solo tours or just giving feedback to some of my ideas. Clarence agreed to produce, but wanted to bring in Magnus Berrison as his sidekick. And I liked that. Magnus is a diehard synthesizer fan, and I had done some other recordings with him, so I felt he was the perfect match to Clarence to produce Pop-Up Dynamo. And then, at the final stage, we joined Christopher Lundquist in his studio, doing some overdubs and some vocal stuff. All of us work really close together in so many projects. There are no egos and silly stuff going on. We all want the songs to be the priority, and we always strive to make the perfect record. My idea was to use the so-called classic Roxette lineup to get the sound I wanted. To get that lineup, I needed Clarence Overman, who's been producing Roxette since the very first single back in 1986. He plays the keyboards and is doing all the programming. I needed Jonas Isaacson on lead guitar. He's the guy who played all those magic riffs we all know by heart. The look, dressed for success, joyride, dangerous. And he did those amazing solos on Listen to Your Heart and Fading Like a Flower. I needed Christopher Lundquist, who came into Roxette as the bass player in the 90s, but has evolved into an excellent producer and also an amazing guitar player. He's got that special gift. He can play any instrument you throw at him. I needed Magnus Berrison, who's the new kid in town. I've only been working with him for 18 years or so. He's been crucial to this project since it's he and Clarence who are the main producers. Magnus is also, of course, a brilliant programmer, so together with Clarence, he could present what I was looking for, an album with a sound rooted in the 80s. 
If the tour would have happened as planned before the COVID shutdown, we would of course have had the honor and pleasure of working with Pelle Alsing on drums as well. Pelle has been Roxette's drummer since the very first album, but he sadly passed away in December 2020. It was a very sad day and we miss him every time we hear a snare drum. It's impossible to replace Marie and Roxette. We worked so tight and I can't really see anyone taking her place and position. I made the decision instead to use two familiar names from the Roxette family, Helena Josephson and Dia Norberg. Both of them have been backing singers on Roxette's world tours for many years, so it felt great and natural to let them take a step forward when needed. They're both incredible singers with unbelievable talents and it was a pleasure for me to have them around shaping my new material into something very special in the Roxette style. When it comes to Helena and Dia, the coolest thing is that they have such different styles when they sing. I try to use that a lot. If you combine their two voices, you almost get a third persona. It's really hard to say who's who when they sing. A little bit like Agneta and Frida in ABBA. When they improvise, they come up with totally different things from different angles, which I find very stimulating and creative. You can use their voices in so many ways. One idea I had early on was also to try out some guest singers on certain songs. I did that. For instance, Swedish singer Leon is singing on one track, My Chosen One. I heard one of Leon's own songs on the radio and I really liked her dark, velvety voice. So I contacted her and asked her if she wanted to sing with me. I sent her my demo and we spent an afternoon in the studio in Stockholm and it turned out amazing. I tried other singers as well, but you know, I'm spoiled. I have Helena and Dia around me and they are really hard to beat. I'm a big fan of record sleeves. That's what I miss the most in the modern era in music. The record store and the record sleeves. You don't present your new music visually in the same way anymore. I think the whole identity of a record lies in the sleeve. Think about all those wonderful albums so many people grew up with. Sticky Fingers, Johnny Mitchell's Blue, David Bowie's Aladdin Sane, Pin Ups, Diamond Dogs, Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon, Sgt. Pepper, Nevermind by Nirvana and all the Led Zeppelin albums. Without all those magic album sleeves, it would all be a big, big blur. That's how I feel. I wanted to make an album sleeve that fit the songs. I've worked with this photographer, Frederick Etoal, a couple of times before. He's amazing. We have so much fun every time we work together. Basically, we just spent a very long day in my apartment and office in Stockholm and took pictures in all kinds of places, fooling around with my guitars in the bathroom, the kitchen, the studio, on the terrace. In the end, I had so much material, it was hard to make choices, so we decided to do an eight-page booklet for the deluxe version of the vinyl album and use many of the pictures there. And then, of course, Frederick Etoile also did the first video clip from Pop-Up Dynamo called The Loneliest Girl in the World. Also shot in Stockholm and it took two days. Frederick works very fast, but he's very meticulous at the same time. Almost every picture he shoots is a piece of art. He experiments a lot, but it's easy to work with and makes you feel at ease. If you have a good time working together, the end result will most likely be very special. I really do believe that. And I only want to work with people that makes me feel good. That doesn't mean that you don't have any arguments or have different opinions about certain things. It's more about the vibe. You have to like each other to be able to create something good together. Well, my plan is to take this band on the road eventually. I can't say exactly when that's going to happen, but I'm sure it will happen one of these days. There are so many people out there who still love Roxette, and it's wonderful and magical to play these songs for them. I'm really proud of all the songs I wrote for Roxette, and of course what Marie and I achieved. It all changed our lives forever. We were really fortunate to get a career like we did, especially coming from a tiny country like Sweden. 
When we started out, the music industry was very focused towards the UK and the US, so the odds weren't really on our side. But we made it somehow. This was the song that started the whole PG Roxette project for me. I got a request to write a song for the movie Top Gun Maverick. It was for a specific scene in the movie where someone is dancing on a beach. I used that in my lyrics. There's a line that goes, Oh, I'm sure you love to dance on the beach. I wrote the song in an 80s style. I made a demo with Helena Josephson singing on it and it sounded terrific. However, the Top Gun people never came back to me, so I kept the song for myself. I don't know if they didn't like it or if they skipped that particular scene. I haven't seen the movie. I really love this song. The blend of Helena's and Dia's voices in the chorus is just magic to me. They sound amazing together. Helena is doing the basic melody, but Dia is overdubbing her, and together they are doing some soulful harmonies and wailing. I love that. I love working with singers who have a brilliant musical ear and a capability to both improvise and deliver attitude and strong emotions. Both Helena and Dia can do that. I started writing this early April 2020 in Stockholm. The first thing I wrote was the melody in the intro, which has the exact same chords as the chorus. Then I made the verse and I got the lyrics together and it all took about a week or so. In May 2020, I made a proper demo at the TNA studio in Halmstad with Mats Persson and Helena Josephson. I remember playing the intro melody with a trumpet sound from an old keyboard. Then I sent our demo to my producers Magnus Barrison and Clarence Overman. And of course, they changed everything. The total feel became much more synthesized, which I liked. It suddenly sounded like a hit single from a different era. And I really love the sound of Helena's voice on this one. I wrote this early March 2021 in Stockholm and it was the last song I wrote for the Pop-Up Dynamo album. I felt like I needed another up-tempo song, so I wrote this one. A little bit of the Cars, a little bit of Blondie, a little bit of my entire record collection. Jonas Isaacson plays an incredible solo on this one. I had to have at least one song on the album which holds a serious guitar solo. Nobody does guitar solos anymore. But it's so much part of the Roxette tradition. And Jonas is the king. I don't know how he does it, but he always leaves you breathless. Dia and Helena sing the lead in the choruses together with me, who sings falsetto a la Barry Gibb. It's fun. And Christopher Lundquist helped us out getting this amazing vocal sound combining all the three voices. I was in Amsterdam in February 2020, just before Covid exploded everywhere. I spent an entire day in Martin Garrick's studio with Giorgio Tunfort, who's a great guy, an amazing songwriter and a wonderful piano player. I've worked with him before together with David Guetta when we wrote some stuff for Monomind. Giorgio sat down by the piano and said, Hey Pear, we should write a new Listen to Your Heart together. I laughed a bit and I said, Okay, why not? He started playing this really beautiful piano part, which actually reminded me of the intro to Listen to Your Heart. And then he just started playing some interesting chords. I started singing a melody that sounded really special. It all went very fast, maybe 30 minutes before we had it all covered. I came back home to Stockholm and two days later I put all the musical parts together and wrote the lyrics. And in May 2020, during the lockdown, I felt the song needed an outro that was completely different from the verse and the chorus, so I wrote that one, the coda in the end. I think it's a lovely song. It was really interesting to get Dia and Helena in there as well. They sound amazing as always. I wrote Watch Me Come Undone on piano in May 2020 during the lockdown. I loved the chord progression, so I kept the same one both in the verse and in the chorus. Watch Me Come Undone has got a really beautiful melody and I tried to create different vibes in the verse compared to the chorus. I thought that was crucial since I'm using the same chords. And of course, it becomes quite different when Helena and Dia is singing the chorus and I'm fooling around with the verses on my own. 
I love the 80s vibe in this production and all the magic sounds that Magnus and Clarence created for me. In February 2021, just before the Pop-Up Dynamo album was completed, I had a great song going with a really nice groove to it, like a sibling to Headphones On, which I also worked on at the same time. For some reason, I couldn't come up with a decent chorus. Luckily, I bumped into an old demo made in the mid-80s. It was a song written by an old friend of mine from Hamstad, Eddie Johnson. I had written the lyrics to his song. Eddie was a really good songwriter in those days. Maybe he still is, I don't know. Anyway, I hadn't heard that song in years, but I remembered it very well. It really had a killer chorus, but it was never recorded or released. So I texted Eddie to check if it was okay for me to use his chorus in my new song. He loved the idea. Then I played my demo for Clarence and Magnus, who instantly turned it into this 80s bonanza. Almost like a Pet Shop Boys production with orchestra hits and everything. It made me laugh, but I liked it. It's pretty different for me to write a song like this. The chorus is really wonderful, but I didn't write that. Thanks, Eddie. I started to write Debris in June 2019, but didn't work on it properly until a year after. Then it was summer 2020 in Halmstad in Sweden. Corona everywhere. I wrote it on an acoustic guitar and I wrote both the verse and the chorus basically at the same time. It's a pretty quirky song, a little bit like Roxette's Crash Boom Bang. I heard from the beginning that the chorus just had to be sung by Helena and Dia. Clarence Overman and Magnus Berrison did a great job arranging and producing this. I love that synthesizer sound they use in the intro. It reminds me of the theme song to Their Persuaders, starring Roger Moore and Tony Curtis. I adored that TV show when I grew up. Christopher Lundquist helped us out with some more guitar parts on this one, as well as playing the solo on his magnificent Ond Martineau machine. The Loneliest Girl in the World was written in March 2020 on guitar. Of course. It's one of those songs you know has something very special the minute you write it. It really grabs your attention when you come up with a chorus like that. At least for me, at my age. The chorus turned out really catchy. Classic power pop and I knew immediately this had the chance to become a great record if we can get the production right. My demo is a little bit more guitar driven than the pop-up dynamo version. It changed mainly to fit the rest of the songs on the album sound-wise. And my demo has a bridge between the verse and the chorus, but my producers, Clarence Overman and Magnus Berrison, removed that. They felt the song became too long, and they were probably right. I wrote Jezebel as a country song. It was a little faster than how it appears on the Pop-Up Dynamo album. I wrote it already in June 2016. At the time, I didn't have any lyrics, just the melodies. More than a year later, in November 2017, I wrote the lyrics and completed the song. As soon as I finished writing it, I went into the TNA studio in Halmstad and made a demo together with Helena Josephson and Mats Persson. It wasn't written for the pop-up Dynamo album at all, but I really liked it a lot. I took it down south to Christopher Lundqvist's studio in Skåne in Sweden in the spring of 2021 and made a recording with him. It's just him and me playing on this one. Christopher is on the drums, the bass, the guitars. I'm doing some piano parts. And Helena is, of course, singing in the choruses. When I heard the final mix, I couldn't decide if I was going to put it on the PG Roxette album, but eventually I thought it was a cool idea. It's different from the rest of the songs, but I kind of like that, because that's the way I am. I'm doing so many different things. I wrote My Chosen One in December 2019. It was one of the first songs I made for the pop-up Dynamo album. I did a demo at the TNA studio in Halmstad together with Helena Josephson and Mats Persson, and it sounded perfect. However, early on in this project, I had this idea to have guest singers on the record just to get unique sounds. And one day, I heard a wonderful song on the radio. It was a record by Swedish singer Leon. I had never heard of her before. She sounded amazing. Her dark brown, velvety voice reminded me of Tanita Tikaram, which I loved in the 80s. 
I contacted Leon and asked her if she was interested in singing with me. And she was. And I was very happy. And we spent an afternoon in Stockholm recording her vocals and it became spectacular. It's one of my favorites on the album. I wrote Walk Right In on piano in May 2020. I loved that chord progression, which actually happened by accident. I played E minor, then G minor instead of G major, which is the standard companion to the E minor chord. At least in my book, it sounded really exciting and very unusual coming from me. I did a simple instrumental demo at the TNA studio and played it over and over again until I could create a melody that felt perfect. And I wrote the lyrics very quickly. Early on when I wrote the song, I realized that I'm gonna have a hard time singing this one. The ending of each sentence is very long. I can't really do that. So who am I gonna call? Helena Josephson, of course. Helena came up to the studio in Halmstad and nailed it immediately. Wow. She was really up for the challenge. It's a tough one to sing, for sure. I sent the new demo to Clarence Overman and Magnus Bergeson, who, of course, found a whole new angle to the song. They created this bass and groove in a Georgia Moroder style that I didn't have on my demo at all. I thought it was really clever, and I was really blown away by it. It had to be the album closer, because it's so special. I'm a lucky guy who have all these wonderful people around me who help me create the music I hear in my head. This album has been a treat both to write and to record. It's been wonderful and very rewarding to gather all the old friends from the Roxette family, as well as some new ones. I'm the blessed one here. Thank you. (laughs) 